Many spiritual traditions convey a sense of something that's very confusing to most people. They talk about things like killing the ego, denying yourself, transcending yourself, living for others and not yourself. And, and hearing those words, we're not sure what to do with those kinds of sentiments. So today I want to talk about that and explore what it means to consider these kinds of messages, in, especially in our cultures today. And as I begin to do that, I want you to subscribe to this video and to click that bell so you're notified of future videos. It's hard for us to understand what it means to kill the ego or deny ourselves or transcend ourselves in a culture where we're taught that it's important for us to have a healthy sense of ourselves. Psychology has helped us understand the importance of being self-aware and self-affirming and having self-esteem. So how do we square what psychology tells us is healthy and these very old messages, long-term messages, historic wisdom messages that come from the spiritual traditions? And so I want to try to unpack some of that. We have to be aware that many people don't have a healthy sense of themselves. Many people have grown up in situations where there was abuse, there was neglect, there was addiction, there was deprivation, and they received all kinds of messages that they weren't good people, that there was something wrong with them. Uh, they were told that they weren't lovable, they were told they weren't worth care, and so they carry that with them. And those are wounds that scar very deeply, part of childhood trauma, as well as other kinds of, of wounds. In addition, there are those who grew up in, in cultures where because of who they were, they were taught that they were somehow inferior. This has to do with things like racism and homophobia and sexism. In psychology, we understand this from the perspective of internalized oppression that when a minority group is repeatedly told that there's something wrong with them, that message is internalized, it's taken in, and it shapes the understanding of self, and it impacts how people relate to each other and, and their ability to succeed. And, and we know that there are all kinds of measures for understanding this, like higher rates of addictions and depression and suicide. And we see this especially in the newer literature around uh, young people and, and trans identity. So all of these social messages greatly impact us. And, and then there's another dimension. There are the people who think too well of themselves, who were arrogant, who think that because of their address, the neighborhood they live in, the clothes they wear, the car they drive, that they're somehow better than other people. Uh, and they operate from that perspective that they are somehow better than others. And that's a false sense of self. That's harmful to them as well as harmful to many other people. So part of our authentic process of growth, part of a balanced process of growth, is to come to understand who we really are as people with worth, as people with value, but not as better than anyone else. It isn't a hierarchy that, that there is something of value in each of us. And we need to be able to affirm that. If we try to kill our ego or deny ourselves without doing that, we're probably going to be doing ourselves harm. That's a form of spiritual abuse. And I've talked about spiritual abuse in other videos. But it's important for us to have a healthy sense of ourself. You can't transcend yourself if you don't have a self. It's really that basic. You can't let go of something that you don't have, that you don't affirm. So that's the starting place for our growth. That's the first phase here of really coming to appraise and appreciate who we are. But as we come to appraise and appreciate who we are and seeing ourselves as people of worth and value, then we have the opportunity to go deeper to really be the people we were made to be, the individuals we were made to be. We mostly understand this through metaphors, and the metaphors that I relate to come out of my religious background. 
you know, I understand that who we are most deeply is an image of the divine, that there's some divine spark, divine light, some goodness, some, some brilliance inside of each of us. Carl Sagan talked about how we're stardust, that we are all essentially stardust. And while that's literally true, there's, there's, a, there's a metaphoric dimension that who we are most deeply is are individuals that have a glimmer and a shine and energy and that really being the people we are made to be, that we were born to be, means that we allow ourselves to live out of that glimmer, that shine, that brilliance. And the more we do that, the more we find happiness, fulfillment, contentment, energy in life. And those are all very positive things for us. So that to do that, we often need to let go of the things that, that shadow that inner brilliance, that inner light. And those are just things we need to let go of. They may be things we think about ourselves or assumptions about what we should do rather than what we really find our authentic selves called to do. They can be various kinds of things that prevent us from living in a whole, authentic, whole and authentic way. But that's another dimension of our growth. So that if we're letting go of anything, if we're transcending anything, then it's about letting go of what we are not meant to be, what is not authentic for us. And that's really where our personal growth and our spiritual growth come into play. I hope that this makes some sense. The process of doing this is, is many fold as with many things. Some of it may require work with a therapist to get past former trauma. Other times working with a spiritual director helps us go deeper. And of course, spiritual practice helps us get more in touch with that inner light within each of us. Share this video. Thank you for your time. Be sure to like the video and know that I really appreciate and value the time you spent listening to this video. Have a great day.